Right. Thank you so much, Kevin. You're my hero. So Ron Paul, thank show. you very much for okay. joining me. Why do IRS agents, why do they have to have guns Even when they come King to your office? Media. I, I guess Trudeau it's because fan. they're afraid uh, people will be angry. Huh? This character's name that I'm reading the book by, is uh, his name is uh, Kevin Trudeau, about the Federal Trade Commission, the Food and Drug Administration, Congress, yeah. and uh, the drug companies. The truth. You can't handle the truth. Maybe you should just stick to that blockbuster lineup of Mr. Fixie. I'm getting rid of the but because of that, it allows you to really, really, Focus and create what you really want. And when you stop looking at what you don't want and start focusing on what you do want, that's when you create it. And that's what the whole program is about. The New York Times best-selling author who has sold some 30 million copies of books like Natural Cures, They Don't Want You to Know About, Debt Cures, and The Weight Loss Cure, Kevin Trudeau, is now on the air. The Kevin Trudeau Show. Guaranteed to make your station sound larger than life. The remedy for boring talk radio. I got to pull back the curtain and expose the great Oz for who he really is. We got to share with you the solutions so that you can make more money and enjoy your freedom. Did I mention you can get on air? Take a look at your current hosts. Do they have a 70% recognition rate among your listeners? Do they spend up to a million dollars a week on TV in your market? Do they use their publishing, online, and TV empires to promote your station? How often do they make personal appearances in your market to help you make more money? Help you Hmm, maybe it's time you had talent who does all those things. Ron Paul, thank you very much for joining me. Why do IRS agents, why do they have to have guns when they come to your office? I, I guess it's because they're afraid uh, people will be angry enough to uh, shoot them. Maybe you're not ready for this show. Maybe your programming and sales teams can't handle what this show will bring week in and week out. You can't handle the truth! Maybe you should just stick to that blockbuster lineup of Mr. Fix-It. I'm getting ready to hang this vintage Victorian wallpaper. The computer nerd. We got an email request on um, the steps to replace a bad CD-ROM or add one. And the real estate huckster. For those of you who are smart enough to take advantage of what's going on... All drug companies want to do is they want to sell more drugs. They want more people to take more drugs every day for the rest of their life. It isn't a secret. The CEOs say it in their meetings. Their goal is not curing and preventing disease. Take a look at your current hosts. Do they have a 70% guarantee to make your station sound larger than life? The remedy for boring talk radio. I got to pull back the curtain and expose the great Oz for who he really is. We got to share with you the solutions so that you can make more money, save more money, keep more money, and enjoy your freedom. Did I mention that you'll get on air and online content, including video of the show for free? Reserve the most powerful, intriguing, must hear, explosive radio show sweeping the country. The fastest growing radio show in America, The Kevin Trudeau Show. show. Guaranteed to make your station sound larger than life. The remedy for of freedom and the greatest country on the planet. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. He's uncensored. He's unafraid. And if you don't call now to reserve the Kevin Trudeau show for your station, he could be on the air down the street. We're going to share with you the solutions so that you can make more money, save more money, keep more money, and enjoy your freedom. You can't handle the truth. The Kevin Trudeau Show. This is Paul, the you. Kevin Trudeau Show. I am exposing the corruption in government and in major multinational corporations. We're telling you the things that they don't want you to know that will make your life better. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Trudeau here. Welcome to the Kevin Trudeau Show, the new relaunch of the Kevin Trudeau Show. If you were watching a little earlier, you saw some clips and some videos of the original show that's, I get that aired over 15 years ago now. We had that show on over, I think it was close to 700 independent stations around the world. And we had, it was estimated somewhere close to 100 million listeners and viewers of that material. Unbelievable. This is before podcasts, before Spotify, before YouTube, before Apple Podcasts, before the internet really. We just kind of live streamed it on, uh, on my website back then. And back then, I launched the radio show. It was three hours a day with like Rush Limbaugh or Howard Stern, three hours a day, five days a week. And I had a little studio in my office, and I broadcast a radio show. And man, people just loved that show. Then we put a camera in the studio, and the camera basically was filming me shoot the radio show. 
and the response was off the chart. But some of you may know the story, and then I'll tell you the story at some point in the future. If you don't know, it's on KevinTrudeauFanClub.com, the whole history. But I was away, as they say, to college for about eight and a half years. Contempt of court. I got the longest sentence in the history of America for contempt of court, which, as you know, is really not a crime. It's not a misdemeanor. It's not a felony. And I spent almost 10 years in federal prison. So I was off the air. And now I'm back. People are saying, please come back and do the show. So why am I doing this show, first off? Why am I here? We're, this is our first inaugural launch. By the way, we'll have lots of mistakes, lots of errors, and we'll have a production meeting where we, I yell at everybody afterwards, and next week will be better, and the week after will be better. By the way, before I even start, I got, I got some people here in the room. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened. ABC News is here right now. They're, they're right over here. They're filming me film this show. ABC News, one of the major news broadcasters in the world. Now, you know you've heard things about the fake news and the mainstream media. A lot of people hate them. And ABC News, before I went away, they flew to Zurich unannounced. All they had to do was call me. I would have set up an interview with them. And they, they did some what's called sensationalistic journalism. Some people call it ambush journalism or gotcha journalism. Hey, they're just doing their jobs. They wanted to get good views. They wanted controversy. Terrific. So they caught me on the street. I was looking really good. Had a nice overcoat on, had my fedora hat on, and I had somebody actually filming them film me. And they asked some questions, and they did this kind of uh, hit job piece on me back then. But got me great publicity. It was fantastic. But all, all in all, ABC News is a good, great, pretty good organization. Then they actually came. I invited them to a Global Information Network major weekend event that was going on in Dallas, Texas. We were just talking about it before the show. Because the, the crew here was there. Actually, the producer was actually there. I brought him down, and he had his film crew there. They were there for two days. I think we had 5,000 or 7,000 people there. At, I'm not sure. Obviously, Kevin Trudeau fans. And the, and the whole idea was, you know, why is the government coming after me when all these people like what I have to sell and enjoy what I'm presenting? And we'll, we'll talk about that. There's, there's some reasons behind the scenes that that's been going on. And you know about censorship today probably more than anything. If you've been following other podcasts and people that get demonetized from YouTube or kicked off and banned from social media channels, whether it's X, which used to be Twitter, or Facebook, they get banned from Facebook or banned from X or banned from YouTube. Censorship, unfortunately, is in full swing. It's really probably nothing like it in the history uh, of America. It's similar to now in America, the type of censorship that goes on around the world. But but ABC News did a great job. And the point is, if you look at the major news organizations in the world, BBC is up there, obviously. Uh, ABC, you could argue NBC and CBS. You could argue Fox. The cable ones really aren't that big anymore. You know, CNN, uh, MSNBC, they're pretty small. But ABC News is probably right at, at the top. And we sent out a press release about this show, and they called, and I invited them in. I said, yeah, film, film me doing the show. And so they've been really nice. They've been here filming the kind of the setup, and they filmed me driving in, and, and they're, they're filming the show today. And I, the reason why I tell you that is this is a big deal. I remember Gladys Knight, uh, you know, Gladys Knight and the Pips. Gladys Knight was married to Les Brown, now, if anybody of you, you know me, if you're a member of the Global Information Network or if you've heard me talk before, you've seen pictures of me and Les Brown. I've had Les Brown speak at my events. Les Brown is a friend of mine. He's been at my house. I, you know, we traveled the world together. Well, Les Brown used to be married to Gladys Knight. Well, this is years ago. So Les calls me up and he says, Kevin, Gladys is performing at the Merrillville Holiday Star Theater in Merrillville, Indiana. It's about an hour from you in Chicago. Do you want to go to the show? I said, yeah, I'd love to go to the show. He said, I'll get you backstage passes. I said, it's fantastic. So I go to the show. Obviously, if you look at my skin color, I am white. And I go to the show and everybody in the audience is black. 
And it was a great show. But I'm the only white guy there. And when I go backstage, I got my backstage pass, <laughs> walk backstage, and I'm, I'm saying hi to all these different people, and I am the only white person backstage. And this one guy comes up to me, he looks at me, and he says, you know, I don't know who you is, but for you, you are somebody. <laughs> so, the, so the reason why I say that is the fact that ABC News is here, and I am so grateful that they're here. It doesn't matter what they say in the show, but I am so grateful that they're here because it shows the world this is something important, the fact that I'm relaunching this show. This is the show where I tell you everything they don't want you to know about. And there's a reason why I went away for almost 10 years. It had nothing to do with contempt of court. It had to do with, you know, you know what, but, I, but I'll talk about this. But why am I doing the show? Why am I relaunching the show? I, we were talking about this before the show. You know, why, well, you know, why are you doing this? Hey, man, I could retire. I don't, I don't need any, any money. I don't have any, but I don't need any. I, you know, I've had it. I've been there and done that. There's nothing else I need to prove to myself or anyone else. I don't need this. So why am I doing this show? When I was away for almost 10 years, there used to be every day called mail call. And all the inmates used to get together and they'd say, mail call! And all the inmates used to come running. And a guy would have a stack of mail and he'd go, Smith, Harris, Alvarez, French, Eastman, Castellano, and to Wakefield, to give all these names up. Usually, in our dorm area, we had about 35 guys. Maybe seven or eight guys would get mail on a given day. And everybody wished they got mail. But very few people got mail. Because we like to get mail. We like to know that people are out there thinking about us and writing, giving us some mail. Then they'd say, Trudeau. And in many times, I remember they had a mailbag, a big mailbag with hundreds, sometimes thousands of pieces of mail. And I was almost a little embarrassed that I got so much mail from you, supporters from around the world, over a hundred and something countries around the world would send me letters. And I would sit there and I, and I tried and guys in, who are there with me know I would sit there sometimes, stay up all night trying to read every letter because I was so appreciative of the support and the letters I got from you all around the world. And the number of letters from people that were saying, Kevin, please come back. Please write some more books. Please, you've, you've changed my life. You've helped me in so many ways. You've empowered me. You've encouraged me. You've helped me take more responsibility for my life. You've opened my eyes to things. You've given me things to think about. You've made me a better person by sharing what you're sharing. You're teaching me how to overcome adversity, how to attain peace and joy within, how to deal with people better, how to communicate better, how to set goals and achieve them. And what you're teaching and, and the books that you're recommending and the audios that you're suggesting are just so empowering. No one's talking this positive message, this uplifting message. I've read your book, Natural Cures, Kevin. I read your book, Mega Memory. I've read your book, Free Money, and I got $3,000. I did this. I used to read all those. So when I came out, I thought, you know, if the opportunity is there, I think that there's a lot of people around the world that do want me to share information. So I started looking across the internet. And I started looking at all these podcasts. You know, there's entertaining shows that I've been on, like Howard Stern. I was on the Howard Stern show. Uh, used to, I was on Rush Limbaugh, one of the rare people that was a guest on the Rush Limbaugh show. Many, many other talk shows and television shows. The Today Show with Matt Lauer, CNN, Fox, Fox and Friends in the Morning as a guest, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But when I went on the air, when I went on the internet, when I came out, I started looking at these podcasts. And there was one, the number one, I think the number one, uh, most listened to Joe Rogan experience. 
Now, I know Joe. I don't know him very well, but I know Joe. Joe and I commentated a pool match that I put on in California. I asked him to come in because I know he shoots pool real well. And I used to actually date a girl, uh, uh, Tammy Sheffield, who was on Fear Factor, and Joe hosted that. She won Fear Factor, and she knew Joe. And so we were going to do this pool thing. But Mike Siegel, some of you heard me talk about him, the world 10-time world champion pool player, winningest player of all time, won 100 tournaments more than anybody else. He knew Joe, and so we called Joe Rogan, and he accepted to come in to commentate. So it was me, Joe Rogan, and Mike Siegel commentating this match. And, of course, Joe's great. He does UFC now, and he's just fantastic. And then we went to play pool afterwards. And Joe Rogan is a hell of a pool player. I mean, he, I, I remember the first rack who played 10 ball, he, he ran the table. And Siegel goes, you, Trudeau, you got your hands full here. I go, no kidding. Oh, my God, he's good. So he, he's a great pool player. But he talked about me on his, on his uh, podcast as well. But when I looked at the numbers that he was getting and I watched his podcast and the subjects that he was covering, I thought to myself, you know, my show before podcast, the Kevin Trudeau show, we had more listeners, more viewers, and I thought our show was as good as Joe's, and it was a different style. It was entertaining and fun. So I thought, okay, I could do something, and I wouldn't really be competing with Joe's show. It's a different type of show if I do a Kevin Trudeau show. And then I looked at uh, Russell Brand, and he, he looks into the camera and rants and raves and He's got a lot of energy and super intelligent guy. Uh, I don't know him personally. I never met him, but I know other people have talked to uh, him about me, and they've had conversations, I believe. But I watched that show. And then, of course, Alex Jones. I've been on the Alex Jones show, and he's banned from everything now. And I watched that show and the number of viewers that he gets. And I started watching The Y Files and all these other shows. And I'm thinking, nobody is out there doing the type of show that I think people may be interested in. And, and that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because there is something missing in the marketplace that I think this show is going to pick up. So I think you're going to love this show. I think you're going to love this show as good or more than any other show out there. Now, how long am I going to do this show? First of all, I don't know. We're testing this. If you're watching, you need to subscribe. And you need to write comments down. What else do they need to do to get, that, get our algorithm up? They write comments. They need to subscribe. Set up your notifications. Thanks, thanks, fellas, for the help. They're all, they're all, I'm asking questions over there. Everyone just staring at me. Like, I, th th Thanks. So if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel. Set the notifications and write some type of comment at the end of the show. That'll get our algorithm up. Because here's the deal. If in a short period of time I don't have a million subscribers, I'm not going to do the show anymore. Now, we're going to do the show one day a week live. I'm broadcasting it live, and then we'll be archived. And then if the show does catch on, I may go to two, three, four, maybe as many as five days a week live. I may be broadcasting the show again because there's a ton of stuff that I can share with you that can help improve the quality of your life. So uh, we, we, when you look at we have a Telegram channel. I, I have a fan club. When I was away, uh, someone set up a fan club, the Kevin Trudeau fan club. And we had, I don't know, hundreds of thousands, millions, I don't know how many numbers that would go to the fan club uh, website, go to the fan club uh, Facebook channel. We have a Telegram channel now for the, Facebook, uh, for the fan club, a fan club Telegram channel. And we got thousands of people on there. The comments, if you were to read the comments, and ABC News, you guys could, should read those comments. You read those comments, they are... 99.99% overwhelmingly positive. And again, th th that's really why I'm doing this show. So what is this show going to be about? How is it going to be different some, from the, uh, some of the other podcasts that you're watching or YouTube shows that you're watching? Well, number one, if you haven't seen already, this is a classy show. I mean, look at the little set here we built. And it's going to get better, but, and by the way, this, this you may, may, may notice this says World's Best Mentor. This is a classy show. So this isn't me doing a podcast wearing a t-shirt. I haven't taken a shower in three days, uh, you know, in somebody's, in, in my basement. Think about it. It's my, the camera's not there. This is a classy show. I'm actually in, in, in a palace right here, right? 
And it was interesting because I'm at this palace. The guy who owns the palace, I found through my DNA research, is a re relative, a distant relative. And if you see the picture of, of the, the painting of the, of the ancestor behind me, that's an ancestor of mine. Some people say that that person looks like me. I don't know if you can kind of see that, but that, some people say that that guy looks like me. I'm kidding. It's not, we're not in a palace. We're in, we're in an office building. We just made it look like a palace. But the point is, this show is a little classier than any other podcast on YouTube. I guarantee you watch any show on YouTube, this is going to be the classiest show that you're going to watch. Class. Number one. Notice that I'm not wearing a T-shirt and a baseball hat. Now, if you watch my old shows, I did. I had a baseball hat, sunglasses on sometimes, fedora on, uh, had a weight vest on one time. People thought it was a bulletproof vest. So that was a different genre. I was shooting a, a radio show that wasn't meant for television or YouTube, and I was just doing a radio show. All you could do is listen to it. But this show is for YouTube and for Rumble and for Facebook and for Telegram and for X and different social media platforms in addition to Spotify and the other podcast places where you just listen, we're going to have video. So it's going to be classy. It's going to be different. That's number one. So I'm going to dress a little different than you're going to see, and the set's going to look a little different. Next, I will have some guests. So like the old Johnny Carson show or the Tonight Show or David Letterman show. Some of you even don't even know who those people are because you're too young. But any of the, of the late night shows where they actually have a guest sitting right there, we're going to have a chair there, and I'm going to bring—I have so many people from around the world who are saying, Kevin, have me on your show. Celebrities, billionaires, people that will blow your mind that says, Kevin, you're doing a show? I'll come down and be on as a guest. Live here, and they'll be sitting right there, and so I will be interviewing some people. We're obviously going to have some guests come on uh, video, so I'll have a— a split screen where I'll be there and I'll have a guest who's not here, but, but they'll, you'll see them on, on. And again, if you looked at the old show, Suzanne Summers was on my show. Uh, she passed away, obviously. Many celebrities were on my show. Jesse Ventura, past uh, a governor of uh, Minnesota. Some of you know him, some of you don't. I had a lot of people on that show and experts on genetically modified food and government experts and you name it. Judge Napolitano was on my show from Fox News, author, expert in ma many areas. It was a phenomenal show. This one's going to be even better. So I am going to have guests as well. What subjects am I going to be talking about on this show? Well, it's going to be everything they don't want you to know about. So what things don't they want you to know about. Well, first off, let me tell you what we're not going to do. This is not going to be a left versus right, a liberal versus conservative, a political show where we talk about Republicans and Democrats. No, it's not going to be about that. Let other people talk about that and bore you to death. We're going to be sharing information that if you know it, it can help improve the quality of your life and your standard of living. And it's not going to be a U.S.-centric show. I know we have followers, we have, I have supporters from well over 100 countries around the world. I have followers probably watching right now or will watch when they wake up and they'll catch the replay from Iran. I get uh, followers from Afghanistan. I get followers from all of Eastern Europe. Italy, France, Spain, Germany, Luxembourg, the UK, Norway, Sweden, Romania, Albania, all throughout Europe, all through the Middle East. I got followers who are going to be watching from Saudi Arabia and Bahrain and Dubai and all many Middle Eastern states. I get people from Southeast Asia, from Singapore, from Thailand, from Laos, from India, Japan, Australia, New Zealand. We got people all throughout the African continent, South Africa, all the way up. I was talking to a woman on the phone a, a few months ago, a, a supporter from Somalia, another one from the Gold Coast, uh, sorry, Ivory Coast, another one from Congo, Ethiopia. All throughout uh, Africa, there are followers who love Kevin Trudeau and what I do. All throughout Central and South America, 
Mexico, all Central American uh, countries and South American countries have a huge following in Brazil, Argentina, Chile, uh, Colombia. I had somebody from uh, Ecuador, Guatemala in Central America, all over the world. Tons of people in Canada, tons in the U.S., you name it. I don't know about Russia. I haven't yet had someone there, but most, well over 100 countries. So this show is not going to be U.S. centric. It's going to be information that no matter where you live in the world, you can be helped in many areas. So we're going to talk about things like natural cures. See that book back there? That book was number one on the New York Times bestselling list for 26 weeks in a row, the year that it came out. Sold estimated over 50 million copies. The year that it came out, it was the number one best-selling book in America in any genre. The number one best-selling book. And it reveals the unholy alliance between the pharmaceutical industry, the food industry, and government. And how they're not working to keep you healthy. I remember when I was on uh, the Today Show with Matt Lauer. I was there to talk about the book. I walk into the studio. Katie Keurig was there. She says, I got your book. Can you sign it? Of course. Can I get a picture? Of course. The cameramen were there. I got your book. Can you sign it? Can I get a picture? Yes. I was there signing autographs and taking pictures with the entire crew. Sat down with Matt Lauer. And Matt Lauer says, look, the drug companies are our biggest advertiser here at NBC. So let's just not talk about the drug companies, but you can talk about anything else in your book, but just don't bash the drug companies. They're our biggest advertiser. He says, I want to help you promote your book, and I want you to sell a lot of books, but just don't mention the drug companies. Well, back then, I was a little more aggressive than I am today. <laughs> we were talking about this. What's, what's different with you today? Well, back then, I was a little more aggressive than I am today. When I sat down with Matt Lauer, I don't remember the first question he asked me, but I do remember my answer. My answer was something like, that's not the right question. The right question is, why did you tell me five minutes ago not to talk about the drug companies because they're your biggest advertiser? That's the problem. The drug companies control media. They control journalism. They control the TV networks. That's the problem. It's censorship because of the drug companies, because they're paying you so much money on advertising, you can't say anything bad about them. And I went on and on and on. I said, the pharmaceutical companies, think about it, Matt, they're publicly traded companies. The, the, the directors and the board of directors and the, and the officers have a fiduciary responsibility to the shareholders to increase shareholder value, which means make more profits. Their goal, drug companies' goal, because they're publicly traded, their goal is to make as much money as they can. It's not to cure or prevent disease. It's to sell more drugs. And if a drug company's goal was to cure disease, healthy people don't need drugs. They have a conflict of interest. And when I said that, and it's something to that effect, Matt was just shaking his head like he just was beside himself. But that's the thing that everybody talked about with that book, Natural Cures. So on this show, I'm going to be giving you the natural cures uh, that they don't want you to know about. Because there are natural ways to cure acid reflux. There's natural ways to cure high blood pressure. You don't need the drugs. First off, I'm not a doctor. So don't listen to anything I say. Talk to your medical professional first. Consult with them. Take their advice. I'm just giving you my opinions, things to think about and chew on. You make your own, own choices. So natural cures. We're going to talk about ways that you can use your mind to manifest your goals, dreams, and desires. Things that you have heard about in the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill or Ask and It Is Given by uh, Esther Hicks, The Teachings of Abraham, The Law of Attraction, and the book The Secret that was promoted by Oprah Winfrey. This is not controversial stuff, but when I say it, all of a sudden it's heresy and it's controversial. But when Oprah says it, it's, of course. 
But Arnold Schwarzenegger says it on his documentary, how he uses the mind and makes a picture of what he wants and uses willpower and perseverance. It's brilliant. I say the same things, and it's heresy. But we'll be talking about those things that they don't want you to know about in every era. We'll be talking about genetically modified foods, food additives that are hurting you, that maybe aren't giving you the best for you and your family. We'll also be talking about, and I'll be showing clips, of how advertisers are completely manipulating you. How they're, they're lying and deceiving. And I'll also show clips from news headlines. And I may pick up on ABC once in a while. But I watch some of the news headlines and I catch them from CNN, ABC, Fox News, uh, CBS, hey, you can even go to CBN, Christian Broadcasting Network. N nobody's immune. But if you look at the headlines, I can show you how the headline is misleading. It's misleading. It's not honest. And many times, it's not even truthful. Now, there's a difference between truth and honesty. If you omit something, even though you make a truthful statement, you're not being honest. It's like when the guy says to his wife, yeah, I had lunch with a friend. Well, that's a truthful statement. But if he was honest, he would say, and the, my friend is my ex-girlfriend who I used to sleep with. That would be honest, but he doesn't say that. So there's truth and honesty. So I'm going to be sharing with you things about how the mainstream media, and of course, ABC exception because they're wonderful, they're right here. The mainstream media, whether it's ABC, CBS, uh, NBC, CNN, Fox, MSNBC, blah, 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 blah. How they, in both their news and uh, what's online, how they use clickbait to, to, to suck you in with a picture that's misleading, with a headline that's misleading, and how you are being manipulated to think a certain way. The reason why I'm going to be showing you this is, and this is very significant, when you watch a magic show, the magician does a trick. You don't know how he does it. It looks like magic. If somebody was to expose how the trick was done, now if the magician did that trick again, it's no longer magic because you know how he's doing it. If somebody is manipulating you in the media using techniques, and I know these techniques, and then I show you how you're being manipulated and the technique, you just got empowered. Because the next time you watch TV, listen to the radio, read something online, all of a sudden now, it goes ding, 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 ding. You actually see what's happening. You know what they're doing. And you just got empowered. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. So the show is going to be about, it's going to be fun. It's going to be uplifting. It's going to be motivational, inspirational. When you watch the show, at the end of the show, you're going to feel better than when you started watching the show. And that's the other thing. When I watched all these other shows, I was watching an episode on somebody's show. I'm not going to mention their name. But I watched the show, and it was like, and, and this guy's wrong, and they're evil, and they're greedy, and they're, gonna, and they're manipulating you. And, and I'm like going, okay, uh, I feel like uh, committing suicide now after an hour. Because he took, the, the guy was like telling me all these horrible things that are going on in the world, but not giving me any solution. It's like, w w w why bother to live? Everything's going right down the tubes. So this show is not going to be about this. This show is going to be about the solution and ways for you to positively impact your life, positively improve the quality of your life, and improve your standard of living. So that's the show is going to be way different. Now, uh, I did, by the way, I got I to thank everybody. Uh, and, and by the way, I don't have a clock here. Just so you guys know, I have no idea what, uh, uh, how long I've been on or anything like that. And this is water, by the way. For those of you who know Gary Spivey, 
Barry Spivey is a good friend of mine. He's a world famous psychic. He's I just talked to him this morning, and he's going to be on the show. And if you you can call in, and he'll do fun stuff with you. He's an energy worker. Uh, <laughs> Gary Spivey and I we traveled through. He lived with me for a while, and he's a great friend. We've known each other forever. But we were in some radio station someplace in America. He was doing a radio show, and he said, "You want to come with me?" I said, "Yeah." We were traveling. I said, yeah, I'll go, I'll go to the station with you for the show. So we went into the show. It's like 8 o'clock in the morning, some morning drive time radio show. So Gary has a bottle of, of water with him. So he's got the bottle of water there. He's got two bottles of water, actually. He's got two bottles of water. So he's got one, and he's sipping out of the bottle of water. He's got about halfway done before the show starts, which is fine. You want to hydrate, you know, coat your throat. And then he starts the show. Well, I grab the other bottle of water. I'm sitting off to the side. I'm not in, in the camera shot. Uh, uh, they were also, they had a camera in the studio, but it was a radio show. And I drink the water and I spit it out. It was pure gin. It's like eight o'clock in the morning. And Gary's got a cup of a double espresso and he's drinking, he's got a half, half of this water bottle already consumed. And then he looks at me. He's, you all right? I go, I thought this was water. He goes, oh, I didn't tell you. It's my psychic cocktail. <laughs> so later on, he told me, yeah, yeah, when I do a show, I always have a little gin, a little uh, double espresso, and it has some chemical reaction. He goes, it just makes me more psychic. I said, Gary, you're an alcoholic. That has nothing to do with being a psychic cocktail. <laughs> Nobody drinks at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, but he, he actually does not drink. Uh, only once in a blue moon, uh, but he's he's a great dad. So this is actually water, and you guys can verify. We have the uh, we have the accounting firm of uh, ABC News over here verifying everything that I say, doing all the fact checking. But before uh, I talk, I, I got to talk about a couple things here. Uh, I I had a birthday recently, February sixth. If you're on the Telegram channel, the Fan Club Telegram channel, you heard about that. So first off, I, I want to thank the hundreds of thousands of you that have sent me messages, whether it's a, a telegram message, whether it was an email, whether it was a text message, whether it was a card, uh, phone calls. I got so many cards, just stacks that came in for my birthday. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for your love and support, and I appreciate you deeply. And there's a couple of them here I just want to read, which I, I thought were kind of apropos. It says, happy birthday, Kevin. Love you from Saskatchewan, Canada. Wishing you all the best on your special day. Thank you for being the world's greatest mentor. Well, actually, it's the world's best mentor, but I appreciate the comment. I wish you an abundance of health, wealth, happiness, and success. Much love. And this is a bunch of people that signed this card, by the way, and here's their picture. This is the guys from uh, Saskatchewan. Uh, happy birthday, Kevin. Thank you so much for creating this club. They're talking about uh, the fan club and the Global Information Network. It has truly changed my life for the better. Much love. Happy birthday, Kevin. What can I say that hasn't been said by thousands already? Thank God for you. What you've done and continue to do has been life-changing for me. I have tasted moments of bliss because of applying your teachings. May you experience the ineffable feeling on your special day and every other day. Thank you for being you. Master Kevin, you are amazing. Thank you. I am so happy and thankful. We are building a new earth because of you. I continue to learn more about my true self because of your teachings. I am as so pe peaceful and now I live in the present. So this is the type of comments we get. I got another one here. Happy birthday, dear Master Kevin. Congratulations to all of us. What a glorious day you came to this world and such a huge honor to be with you at the same time frame. I, as a person from Afghanistan, would never imagine to be introduced to you but today, the blessings that are coming from you have surrounded all my life and family. 
From the moment we have you, our life is fully covered with joy, happiness, blessing, prosperity, and fortune, fortune, and all impossibilities in our mind turned to possibilities, and we're experiencing them one after another. We are grateful for your being, having you, and for all the blessings and energy that are flowing to us from you at every moment. Thank you, Master. And then from their children, my seven-year-old son that wants to learn from you and how to fly. My three-year-old daughter always calls you Kevin, my mom's master. God bless you. Thank you so much. I get one last one here. Uh, dear Master, by the way, when somebody calls me master or guru, I take that with great humility and gratitude, and I appreciate that. In my life, I've had many gurus that I've called guru or many people that I call master. In the West, when you call somebody a guru, obviously it's a cult. No, it's not a cult. Guru simply in this context means uh, someone who enlightens or sheds light on things. In other words, opens up your eyes to things, awakens you. It's really all, all it means. Sometimes we use the word guru as somebody who's an expert. And that's true too, but really the word guru from the East means somebody who sheds light on things. It, it, it puts light where there's darkness. So it kind of opens up your eyes to things. Master, we use in martial arts all the time. Shifu or master or sensei, these are words that are used to somebody that we have reverence toward. In, in, in many parts of the world, a professor at a college or university is called master. Nobody thinks it's a cult or wrong. So many people that write me are from around the world in different cultures. And sometimes somebody who's from the West thinks this is weird. Well, be a little more inclusive. Be a little less judgmental, Westerners. You know, there are other cultures out there. You know, our show, by the way, I believe is going to be and is already the most inclusive show anywhere in the world. We accept everybody. We got people, it doesn't matter what your skin color is, doesn't matter what your religion is, doesn't matter what your sexual preference or orientation is, doesn't matter if you're tall or short, thin or fat, doesn't matter if you eat McDonald's and it doesn't matter if you take shots or do whatever, there is nothing. We are all love and light, and everybody is loved unconditionally, without exception, and without condition on our show, and everybody is welcome. Uh, God bless your mother and the day she gave birth to you, February 6th. I am sure you feel her smile and love every day. You have changed my life. There are no words to describe the gratitude I feel for the constant gift that you are. Sometimes, Honestly, a lot of the times, I have questions. You answer them as if you were right here. Sometimes it's through a lesson or something in your wish is your command. That's my audio series that I did. Or even through an experience, and it's like you're there. I am growing. I still have a lot to learn and always will. Thank you for how far I have come. Again, just a couple of them, but we got thousands of them. Thank you all for all of the... Beautiful, beautiful messages. Oh, one other thing. I'm learning about this new genre. In America, we have something in the Constitution called free speech. It's the First Amendment. The First Amendment, actually, I read it one time on the air, and then I got thrown in jail the next day. <laughs> Absolutely true. I was hauled into court the next day after I read, how dare I read the First Amendment of the United States on, on the radio and tell people what it actually is in there. How dare? How dare you? you? Well, one of the things in the First Amendment says you can petition government for grievances. You have a right to do that. But if you do it, you'll go to prison. Wait a minute, I thought it was a First Amendment constitutional right. Oh, well, don't worry about that. But anyways, we have a right to free speech, but not really, because... I'm broadcasting on this platform called YouTube. YouTube is an independent company. Do they have a right to censor what's on YouTube? Does Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, does he have a right to censor what's on Facebook? Does Elon Musk have a right to censor what's on X? He owns X, the former Twitter. 
I don't know the answer. I'm not a legal scholar. Many, many, many cases in court say, yeah, they have a right to. If you own a magazine, let's say your magazine was called uh, Christian Living. Let's say you started the magazine, Christian Living. You're a born-again Christian. Christian Living. And somebody came to you and said, I want a full-page ad promoting, uh, promoting a photographer who specializes in homosexual weddings. And, and you're the publisher of Christian Living, and you're a born-again Christian, and, 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 and you say, I'm not going to accept that ad because it goes against my Christian beliefs. Well, are you censoring that person? Or do you have a right not to accept that ad? Good argument, right? If you are a Muslim, Muslims don't drink alcohol, or not supposed to. Let's say you're a Muslim, and you have a, a, a magazine called Muslim Living, and a beer company comes and said, I want to run an ad for beer. And you say, no, that goes against our, our Muslim Islamic beliefs. Do you have a right to censor that speech? and not allow that person to talk about alcohol and the benefits of drinking alcohol. Is that censorship, or do you have a right to do that? That's a good argument, right? So here we are in YouTube, and YouTube has a right, whether they have a right or not, it's debatable, but they do kick people off YouTube if you say things that they don't like. Okay, we know this. This is... This is 100% absolute, right? So <laughs> I asked, I asked my, sta my staff came to me. I, I didn't know this. They said, oh, by the way, this just happened about five days ago. Oh, by the way, like, thanks for the heads up. Oh, by the way, Kevin, uh, when you do your show, there are certain things that you can't say. I go, what are you talking about? It's on the internet. I can, do, I can say anything. I mean, I, I see people cursing and swearing. I watch Joe Rogan. It's F this, F that, F this, F that. I don't swear in rare instances, usually for comic relief, but not even because I don't think it's funny. So on our show, we're not going to curse, for example. I, I, have, I have a big enough vocabulary. I don't need to use the F word. Okay. I remember I was uh, talking to a guy, and he was, says, he's from the East Coast, and he says, yeah, my mother uh, told me to do this. I go, mother, mother. I go, it's, I go, it's mother, mother. He goes, oh, you said half a word. Some of you will get that on the way home. Uh, but I, I was told you can't say certain words, certain subjects you can't cover. Certain subjects I can't. Yeah, if you, if you talk about this subject, you'll be, you'll be uh, branded with presenting misinformation. But it's an opinion. No, but they'll brand you as a, 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 an espouser of misinformation. I go, you mean this thought police now going on? You can't give an opinion? Like, is there a rule book? They go, yeah, there's a bunch of words that you can't even use the words. So look at this. Look at, look at how many words. Look at how many? These are the words. I'm looking at these words. You mean I can't say, well, there's two numbers. Uh, there's two numbers. I can't. I can't say these two numbers. I can't say that. That can get me kicked off YouTube. I mean, I'm not going to say it anyway. But what if that was the number of a fo our phone number and I gave that out? I mean, I could probably be kicked off. I mean, seriously, because some algorithm is going to just. There's not a person. Oh, call us at one eight hundred six. And then we get kicked off. Oh, by the way, I am going to be taking phone calls, not today. Uh, I'm looking at my guys over here. I thought we were going to be taking phone calls today, but we're not. But we will be taking phone calls in the future. So when you come on, you'll be able to call, and I'm going to have a phone right here. And I'll be able to pick up the phone and go, hello, you're live on the air. And you can have a conversation with me. So that's going to be a lot of fun as well. But look at the, the number of words is mind-boggling. So a lot of guys on YouTube broadcast the, we'll call it the clean version, 
the watered down version on YouTube and then say, now it's time to switch over to the social media video platform called Rumble, which won't kick us off. And then people switch to Rumble and then they watch the rest of the show where all this stuff that you're not allowed to talk about on YouTube gets discussed. Why do they do that? They do that because YouTube has a much bigger audience. Rumble is very, very small. So if we just broadcast on Rumble, we wouldn't have any viewers. Now, we're just starting. We don't have very, very viewers now. I don't know if we have 500 or 5,000 watching right now. Probably by the end of the week, we could have 10, 20, 30, 50, 100,000. Who knows? But like I told you, we need to have 1 million subscribers. Otherwise, I'm done. So I'm going to encourage you, send this link out. I don't even know how to do it. I am not a social media guy. But send the link out to everybody you know. Get people to subscribe. Make sure you set up the notifications and make sure you also write some comments. All these things go into the algorithm, which tells YouTube that we're liked. But look at the amount of words here. This is mind-boggling. Censorship at its highest rate. And then look at this. Spam and deceptive practices. So I get this, this report I got to read. And this is about all the uh, sensitive content I can't talk about. Offensive thumbnails that we can't put on. Violent or dangerous content I can't talk about. Mis misinformation. 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 When I wrote the book Natural Cures, they don't want you to know about. I was accused, and I think ABC News was one of the accusers, but I was accused of saying things that were blatantly untrue. I said lies in that book. One of the lies that I got crucified for was Johnson's baby powder, talc, talcum powder. You read that book, it's right there. And I said, talc should not be put on your skin. Whatever goes on your skin gets absorbed into the skin. That's what a transdermal patch is. The pharmaceutical companies sell them. They deliver the drug through the skin. A transdermal patch means it like, looks like a little Band-Aid. It could be round or square. And in the padding, they put the drug. And when you put that on your skin, it absorbs into the skin, thus into the bloodstream. Therefore, anything you put on your skin is absorbed into the bloodstream. So I said talc leads to ovarian cancer and other forms of cancer. I got crucified, I got threatened, uh, a billion dollar lawsuit by Johnson & Johnson by making that false statement. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's add this to the Kevin was right file. What do we know today? Try to go buy some Johnson's baby powder. It's off the shelves. Talcum powder has been taken off. You can't even buy it at a bar, get it at a barbershop. Talcum powder has been proven now. It was proven back then, but it just wasn't proven enough, I guess. So the point is, we'll probably do the same thing. We'll probably have the show here on YouTube, and then we'll switch at some point over to Rumble, where it's the floodgates are open, baby. Floodgates are open. All right, so let me tell you about a couple other things. First up, I need a clock or something so I know what time it is. Anybody know what time it is? You can just say something. 1.49. 1.49, very good, okay. What's upcoming? Well, I got some good news to share with you. Oh, by the way, do you like these little uh, Aladdin's lamps? I have the Aladdin's lamps here. Uh, and Aladdin, the genie, is in the lamp. Uh, when, and there's another one. I got two genies because I will open up Aladdin's lamp. And when I do, he will grant you your wish. What does that mean? These guys don't even know this. That means I'm giving stuff away on the show. We're going to be giving away cash money on the show. You get the genie to grant you your wish. And we'll be giving away a lot of things on this show. So make sure you tune in. It's only for people who are watching live. All right, so a couple of, a couple of uh, upcoming things. And this is our inaugural show. We're just kind of giving you an overview of what's going to be happening in the future. See that book, Natural Cures? I wrote that book a while ago. 
I was talking to a major publisher, actually the president of the publishing company from New York the other day, and he goes, man, please, please, can you come up with a new updated version of Natural Cures? Because things have to have changed, and many of the things in there, and he was rattling off, he was the one who mentioned the talcum powder to me, and a bunch of other, he goes, all these things that you said that back in the day, I have all, he goes, I have all the media where they told, where they were saying that you're, you're, you're spreading misinformation. They're all proven to be true now. I go, so yeah, so the file, Kevin was right, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. He says, yeah, so please rewrite that book. So I have good news for you. This year, God willing, if all goes well, by the way, world's best man, we're going to change it. Uh, so now I am, I'm going to be talking as marketing genius. So Kevin Trudeau, marketing genius. That, that's, that's who's talking now. Okay. I'm going to rewrite. Oh, we need another one, Joe. Uh, number one, New York Times, number one best-selling author. That's what we need. We need one of these to say number one New York Times best-selling author. So this year, God willing, I'm going to come up with a brand new updated, brand new, brand new updated natural cures they don't want you to know about book. Uh, good news for you. It's not going to be 600 pages. It's going to be a lot smaller, a lot faster read. It's going to go right to the point. So that's coming out this year. Next. When I came up with the book Natural Cures, they don't want you to know about, I also launched naturalcures.com. This is the website. So I'm talking to the owner of that because when I went away, the government took that over. They sold it, blah, blah, blah. So I'm talking to the owner about getting ownership again of that. And the owner is very amenable. He wants to work together, and so we're working something out. But naturalcures.com may be coming back, and this is going to be the place where you can go, which will have up-to-date information on the natural, non-drug, and non-surgical ways to cure and prevent disease that the drug companies don't want you to know about. This site, naturalcures.com, is going to be as big as WebMD. You watch. It's going to be the number one site in the world to learn about alternatives to drugs and surgery. And let me tell you something. I'm not against drugs and surgery. I'm in a car crash. You rush me to the closest emergency room and use drugs and surgery to save my life. I am not against drugs and surgery. But if there's an alternative, a non-drug option, isn't that something that you should consider? At least consider it. Look, I cut my finger. I smoke cigars. Some of you know that, right? Like George Burns. And I love George Burns. Some of you don't know who George Burns is. You guys know who George Burns is? Okay, so George, George, George and Gracie. George and Gracie Burns. You should check that out on YouTube. He used to smoke a cigar. That was his trademark. Arnold Schwarzenegger smoked cigars. When he was governor, he had a, a smoking cigar tent out in front of the governor's mansion. That's where he had all his meetings. He used to sit there, not in the governor's uh, office. He used to smoke cigars all day long. I want to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger, so I'm smoking cigars too. So I smoke cigars. And I went to the cigar lounge, and they have this cigar cutter where you put the cigar in and you pull this lever, and it slices. It's like a rage light. It slices the cigar so it cuts off the end so you can smoke it. That way you can inhale the smoke. And they got four little places here because it gives you different cuts based on the size of the cigar. So I grab this cigar, and I shove it in there, and I'm holding it in like this, and then I pull. But my little finger... Was in, the, was, one, was in one of the holes. And when I pulled this, the, the cutter came in. It not only cut my cigar, it cut my finger. It almost cut the, the tip of my finger off. Blood is going everywhere. So what do I do? I go to the emergency room. I want a doctor to stitch it or put my finger back together. I want drugs or surgery and save my finger. I don't want to lose the tip of my finger. I'm not against drugs and surgery. And the woman there was a trained medical doctor and she stitched it up, put it together. And then she said, I want you to put some antibacterial something, she said, some something that's antibacterial on it every day, change the bandage every day to make sure it doesn't get infected. And I said, what do you recommend? And this was beautiful. She said, well, 
I'm here at the hospital. I'm a medical doctor, so I have to recommend bacitracin or neosporin. But there are some other alternatives. And I said, how about manuka honey? Raw manuka honey. She goes, that's the best. That will heal it faster than bacitracin or neosporin. But I can't tell you that because I'm here at the hospital. I have to tell you the drug option. That's the blending of drugs and surgery and a natural remedy. So I went home and I used Manuka honey and I said, how long will it take for it to heal? She goes, two weeks. I want you to come back in a week so I can take a look at it. I went back in a week and it was completely healed. It was almost healed in four days. She goes, you used the Manuka honey, right? And I said, yep. She goes, see, I told you. She goes, you can go online and find all the research. It actually works faster and better at healing than Neosporin or Bacitracin. I said, yeah, when I was a kid, we used to put iodine on it. She goes, they don't recommend that because you can't get a patent on it. It's too cheap. I goes, we also used to use hydrogen peroxide. She goes, both of those things will kill all the bacteria because that's what we used to use when we were a kid. We used to put iodine on it. Remember the red iodine? Or we used to put hydrogen peroxide, but those are so inexpensive, nobody will promote them. They work as good or better than the Neosporin or the... Uh, 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 the, the, other, the other product there. But the Manuka honey for healing is, is, really, is really spectacular. So naturalcures.com is going to have all these uh, things. It's also going to have a list of every uh, doctor that doesn't use drugs and surgery to cure and prevent disease. And that'll be searchable by location, by the type of uh, healing modality they use, as well as what diseases they specialize in. It'll list all the common diseases and their ailments. It's going to be a spectacular website. Next, you can look, look over, over this side of my shoulder here. If you can see it, it's called the KT Daily. World's Best Nutritionals and Organics Incorporated has been formed with the approval of the court. Actually, I had to get that approved. And I will be bringing back the KT Daily, and we're going to put together a whole list of uh, uh, natural organic products. Why did I do this? Look, I take food supplements to supplement my food intake. Why? Because I believe that if you eat food today, even if it's 100% organic food, you still have some nutritional deficiencies. And that comes from a whole bunch of different reasons. One, the, the soil is completely depleted. So even if you're buying organic carrots or organic celery, Dr. Emmanuel Sharaskin, and this was, I think, 25 years ago he said this. He said you'd have to eat five times, as, as, uh, five times the amount of fruits and vegetables today that, that, than you did as your grandparents did just to receive the same nutritional value. That was 25 years ago. It's worse today because of the way that herbicides and pesticides and fertilizers, chemical fertilization is used. They don't use crop rotation. So the, the mineral content in, in the soil just gets depleted. Think about this. You go buy an onion. When I was a kid, you used to get an onion, and you used to cut the onion. The moment you cut the onion, what, what, what happened? You, you cried. Cut, you can slice onions all day. Nobody cries. You can't even taste the onion. They have no, no taste. Think about that. None. So food is depleted of nutrients. So you need to take some nutritional supplements, but you're getting ripped off. Everybody who's taken vitamins, I'll be explaining this on the show. For, this is all free information. I'm, I, I am going to write a book called The Vitamin Scam, which will expose how you are being ripped off by the nutritional companies. So not only do the drug companies hate me, because I've exposed that in, in natural cures, and the food companies got exposed what they do, all the food additives. Now, the, the vitamin companies, who were my last group of friends out there in the business world, uh, they're going to hate me now because I'm going to come up with a vitamin scan and show you how you're getting ripped off by all the food supplements that you're taking that are just a waste of, waste of money. So the vitamin scan book is coming out. But the world's best nutritionalist and organic is going to have a range of products going to blow your mind. The best of the best, in my opinion. Nutritional supplements, but also foods. I'll give you an example. Italian salad dressing. I want to buy some Italian salad dressing. So I go to Whole Foods, 
and I look. I'm looking for Italian salad dressing. Italian. Italy. Right? Pali Italiano? Italiano. Io sono Italiano. I am Italian. How do you make salad dressing in Italy? What type of oil do you use? Do you use grapeseed oil? Do you use canola oil? Do you use avocado oil? This is a trivia question. If you're Italian living in Italy and you want to make an Italian salad dressing, are you using soybean oil? Are you using sunflower oil? Or are you using extra virgin olive oil? Oh, in the back? Nope, nope, not sunflower oil. Nope, no, no, you're wrong. Over here, over here. Avocado, no, no, not the avocado oil. No, the Italians in Italy aren't making their dressing with avocado oil. But, but organic avocado oil? Nope, they still don't use it, even though it's organic avocado oil. How about over here? Organic soybean oil, non-genetically modified. No, the Italians actually don't use organic soybean oil. They use extra virgin olive oil. I can't find. Then I went online. Organic Italian salad dressing. And I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm, I can't find one that's made with extra virgin olive oil. So this is already this company. Because I'm going to make things like salad dressing, ranch salad dressing, Italian salad dressing, Russian salad dressing, Thousand Island salad dressing, French salad dressing. That's going to be made with the best ingredients we can find that nobody is using because even though it says organic, these people are not your friends. I went to their manufacturing facilities. I've talked to the presidents of these companies. And you know what they tell you? They go, Kevin, it's not about the ingredients. You can put this in and it's cheaper. It's about what the label says. People don't know the difference. If you put organic, you can use the super, 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 super organic soybean oil, and people will still buy it. I go, yeah, but it's not the best salad dressing. It's not very good, is it? No. I just got a, a time. It's 2 o'clock. It's 2.03. Is that, that the time, or is that how long I've been on? 2.03. It's 2.03. Okay. We still got some time for our inaugural show. So I'm launching World's Best Nutritionals and Organics salad dressings. It's going to be the best ingredients in the world, and it will taste the best. I'm going to double-blind taste test this across the board. It's going to be the best-tasting salad dressings in the world. What else are we going to sell? A whole bunch of stuff. I'll put together a list. I'll tell you more later, but I'll tell you another one. Frozen pizza. It's the, do you know this? It's the number one selling, number one selling frozen food product in the United States. I don't know around the world. So if you're in Afghanistan, I'm not sure if it's the number one selling frozen item there. I don't even know if you have frozen items there. But in America, I can't find a frozen pizza that's any good. Why? Number one, the flour. First and foremost, it's the flour. In America, Canada, and around the world, People have gluten sensitivities. I'm allergic to gluten. I'm sensitive to gluten. I have celiac disease, which means I can't deal with gluten. Gluten makes me bloated. Gluten makes me gassy. Gluten makes me spacey. Gluten makes me get fat. Yes, 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 you are correct. But it's, hmm, let's think about it. I was in Las Vegas getting on a plane, the guy in front of me had a carry-on with this Italian label on it. And it looked like a flower company. I said, is that a flower company? Yeah, I represent this flower company from Italy. I'm Italian. I says, you and I need to talk. I says, is there a difference between flower from Italy and flower in, let's say, America and Canada? He goes, yeah. What's the difference? He goes, well, it's multiple, but I'll give you a couple of them. He says, number one, the wheat that they use in, if you start, start, with, the, start with the seed, M much of the seeds used in North America, America and Canada, are either genetically modified or a hybrid, which means they're not natural. They're not an heirloom seed. It's not what nature intended. It was manufactured uh, through splicing and dicing for specific commercial purposes. It screwed up the wheat. That's number one. Number two. 
what they spray on the, on, on the wheat and the fertilizer they use is, is completely different. Next, they're using hard, high protein or high gluten wheat in America to make flour. In Europe and in Italy, we're using soft wheat, not hard wheat, and we're using low protein, low gluten wheat. Huge difference on the body when you, comp when you eat both. It's like night and day. Next, he says in America, they age the flour about eight hours. There's some aging process. He says in Europe, it's up to 48 hours where they ferment it. So it's broken down. It's like pre-digested. So if you use Italian double zero flour, for example, to make your pizza dough versus flour from America, and you just eat the dough, one is going to give you a gluten allergic reaction. The other one isn't. This is why people who are even celiacs in some cases go over to Italy, eat the pasta, eat the pizza, eat the bread, and go, how come I don't have any reaction? Do you understand this? So our pizza dough is going to be made from the world's best flour period in the world from Italy. Then every other ingredient, the tomatoes, are going to be from Italy. It's a pizza. It's Italian. You, tomato, you want to taste, taste the best? Get the best. The, the cheese, it's not going to be from Wisconsin or California. It's going to be from Italy. It's going to be real cheese from cows that eat grass that are not injected with bovine growth hormone and given antibiotics and fed corn. I'll talk more about this later. But the point is, we're going to make the best pizza in the world with the best ingredients. That's why it's going to be called World's Best. And most importantly, for most of you, is how does it taste? It's going to taste the best. How do we know? Because we're not going to sell it unless it does taste the best. We're going to have all these different pizzas out there. We're going to have people double blind taste test them all day long. What a great job this is going to be. Bring people in, eat, free, free lunch. Just rate what it is. And we'll film it, and people will say, this is the best. And if, it's, if we don't get the vast majority of people saying that ours tastes the best, we ain't going to sell it. So look for the world's best nutritionals and organics. Oh, we got cookies, too. I got to tell you about the cookies. You like Oreo cookies? Oh, this is going to piss some people off. Oops, did I, can I say that word on, on, uh, before we get kicked off? Oh, God help us. I'm, I'm going to say a prayer of forgiveness. Oh, bless me, Father, for I've sinned. I've said the word, the P word. The Catholics know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so let's talk about the cookies. All right, trivia question. All right. Yeah, I'm still marketing genius. I'm just talking about marketing ideas. I got some other ones over here, too. I'll bring those out in a minute. All right, but I'm still talking about marketing. So... Another tidbit. Oh, by the way, so if you are going to go buy, until this comes out, if you're going to go buy frozen pizza, see, see if, it, if it's a product from Italy. If you're buying a frozen pizza that's a product from Italy or it says Italian flour, if you can find one, then, then buy that and, and then you, let me know. Let me know how it is. All right. Cookies. How many people watching by show of hands like Oreo cookies? Anybody here like Oreo cookies in the room? Okay, we got a bunch of mannequins here in the room. Okay, if you didn't raise your hand, you didn't understand the question. Everyone likes Oreo cookies. Do you know that the Oreo cookie is a knockoff of another, of another cookie? Did you guys know that? Anybody know that? No. no. It was a knockoff of another cookie. Oreo cookie was not the cookie. Uh, it didn't start. It didn't, it didn't, wasn't a trailblazer. There was another company... I think the company was called Sunshine. And it came out with another cookie called the Hydrox cookie. Anybody hear the Hydrox cookie? No, nobody's heard of the Hydrox cookie. No, the Hydrox cookie came out first. Two chocolate wafers with a vanilla cream filling. That was the Hydrox cookie. Terrible name because they didn't know how to market. Then Nabisco which, anybody know what the word Nabisco stands for? Anybody here? No? Okay, anybody at home know what Nabisco stands for? 
National Biscuit Company. National Biscuit Company. So Nabisco comes up with a knockoff to try to beat Hydrox, and they called it the Oreo, and it beat them. Do you know why the original Oreo tasted so much better than the Oreos that they make today? I will give you the reason. The number one reason is back then, in order to make the cookie crispy yet also moist, this flaky moist, but still with a crunch, they used lard in making the cookie. Pork fat. And did you know that the sugar used was from sugar cane? It's called cane sugar, not high fructose corn syrup as it is today. And today, instead of the beef fat, they use hydrogenated oil, which is a trans fat, which kills you. It basically scars the inside of the arteries and gets you clogged arteries. No good. Makes you fat as well and increases your appetite. Not a good thing to consume. But it's cheap. So that's why they put it in there. The cream filling. Back in the day when the Oreo cookie was delicious, the cream filling also had in it lard, pork fat, and cane sugar, and vanilla from Madagascar. World-class ingredients. And when you ate it, it was delicious, but here's the point. It was also filling. You could eat one cookie and you were completely satisfied. You didn't need to have another one. It was just like perfect. It was just like, that's enough. Um, because you're getting a lot of good fats. It was Now back then, there's an old saying, back in the 1950s, what did they call organic food? Food. They didn't have to call it organic food because all food was organic. They didn't start using all these chemicals. Really, it started back in the 60s, primarily. Some of it in the 40s and 50s, but most of it back in the 60s. So back in, in the 20s, all food was organic. They didn't have chemical fertilizers. They didn't have uh, Roundup. Think about that. So World's Best is going to come out with an Oreo-type cookie. It is going to be spectacular. It's going to be the best-tasting Oreo-type cookie you've ever had. And it's going to have world-class ingredients, real cane sugar, real vanilla from Madagascar, the best cocoa on the planet, wherever that is, we'll find it. We'll make sure it's the best, the best tasting. It's going to be fantastic. The flour is not going to be American flour that's high gluten, that's only been, uh, that causes all these problems. It's going to be proper flour, probably from Italy, that's been fermented properly, so it's been pre-digested. And we, we will use an animal fat in there like they did in the original, and it's going to be spectacular. It's not going to be vegan. Sorry, vegans. But it's going to be spectacular. We'll get a whole bunch of stuff. I, I, I'll go over the list later with you. So that's coming out. And the KT Daily Nutritional Summit's coming out. A couple other things, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you... Oh, I got some... I got, see my little cards here? I get so much to talk about. And my time is running out. Because my first show, I, I, I promise, is going to be about an hour and a half. To two hours, maybe. Maybe longer. We'll see. All right. Anyways. So ABC News said, you don't have a teleprompter. What are you, you going to read? You don't have a script. I, what are you talking about? Script? Just put the mic in front of me. All right. Um, next... Surprise. See back there, over the shoulder? It says, your wish is your command. How to manifest your desires. That's the greatest, uh, it's the greatest manifesting course or success course of all time. It's the think and grow richer of our time. People have said it is the most unbelievable, clearest, concise program of the law of attraction and how to mess goals, dreams, desire out there produced by anybody. And it contains material that isn't in anybody else's courses. And that's true. 
Well, as I mentioned to you, I was talking to the publisher. And I'm going to change this. I'm, I'm going to be not marketing expert right now. I'm going to be... Here we go. Oh, that'll piss everybody off. Guru. So your wish is your command coming from the guru, Kevin Trudeau Guru. I'm going to put that in a book. I am going to, by the end of the year, God willing, write the book, Your Wish is Your Command. That's why we have the little genie. How to have your own personal genie that can virtually grant you your every wish. It'll be the think and grow rich of our time. It'll surpass the secret. It'll surpass the law of success in 16 Lessons by Napoleon Hill. There isn't going to be a book out there that is as systematic on how to have a dream, have a goal, and manifest it and turn it into reality. Your wish is your command is coming out. I got one more book coming out as well. And that other book is called The Prodigy. And some of your, if you remember the fan club, uh, you've, you've, you've heard in the last newsletter that The Prodigy is, uh, there's a bunch of, bunch of book publishers as well as Hollywood. Uh, some of you know James Gondolfini. He was uh, Tony Soprano in The Sopranos. Well, before he passed away, it's a funny story. It's not a funny story for Tony. Kind of funny story for me. He called me and he says, Kevin, I know your history with the Secret Society, the Brotherhood. I have friends who are in Skull and Bones that know you. I have friends who are in different positions that know of you, have heard of you through the grapevine. And I know that you're exposing things. And I know that you have this amazing story. He goes, I want to do a series on your life of when you were young, when you got inducted into the Brotherhood, how they used your mental abilities, your psychic and abilities and all these different abilities and how you got trained through the Brotherhood, what the training was like, who you met, where you traveled around the world. You know, how is it that kings still call you to this day and ask for advice? Um, billionaires call you and ask for advice and it's it's like one of the most secret things going because of your ability to see. Because I want to do a series. I want to call it The Prodigy because that's kind of what you are. And you're, you're kind of based on a true story, dramatic series. And I said, all right, I'll, I'll do it. We had a couple conversations because I wasn't keen on doing it. I said, I really don't want to do this. I don't really want to share all that kind of intimate detail and I understand it's going to be dramatized and so forth, but I don't really see the upside. How is it going to help people other than just maybe increase my celebrity? And he said, no, this will really expose people. It's kind of like when you're doing the show Ancient Aliens, you're exposing people to different ideas and kind of raising awareness and raising consciousness. So he kind of convinced me. I said, okay, I think I'm keen on doing it. He says, okay, great. I'm going to Rome on a trip. And when I come back, let's meet. I said, that's, that's terrific. Have a great time in Rome. And for those of you who don't know, when he went to Rome, he dropped dead. I think it was a heart attack. So while he was on that trip, he dropped dead. And I got the news from his uh, studio people. And I was like, okay, well, it was not meant to be. It wasn't meant to be for, t for Tony, well, Tony James, James Gondolfini. But it certainly wasn't meant to be. So now I've had publishers call me, as well as Hollywood, and they said, we want to do a series and bring this back to life and, and, and tell your story because it's almost kind of like an X-Men series or a MK Ultra series. You know, the Born Identity, although you weren't an assassin, but you worked in this group. We think it'll be kind of a cool story. So I said, all right, well, why don't we start with the book and see if there's an interest and if there's an interest, then we can do that. So I am going to be coming out with a book and maybe a series of books, not one. So it'll be a series where it kind of picks, you kind of pick up from the last, the last book goes on to the next episode. We're not sure exactly how we're going to do this, but that probably won't be done this year, probably next year, but that book is, is coming out as well. All right. All right. So what we're going to talk about right now, and again, I would be going to the phone lines or you could call in. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Oh, I know what we do. Um, they have a chat, right? They have a chat available on uh, YouTube? Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
I'm going to talk about some things, but if you have a question, if you have a question, do you want to talk to me? I am next week, hopefully, guys. Hopefully, I'll be able to take your phone calls, and we'll, we'll do phone calls. But today, I can't take phone calls, so it's our first show. Give us a break. Be nice. Be nice. If you have a question, put it in the chat. Brian's over here, and he's manning the chat right now, and he's going to look, and he's going to pick a good question. And while he's looking, I'm going to talk about this. One question, I'm going to ask myself a question because it's not a question, it's a question I get all the time. Kevin, you've gone through this tremendous amount of adversity in your life. I mean, tremendous amount of adversity. How do you handle it? How do you overcome adversity? There's nobody that could have dealt with the amount of negative publicity, unfounded, lies against me, misleading information against me, misrepresentations. Nobody told the whole story. I remember when I was on CNN with Paul Azan. I'm on CNN with Paul Azan. The book Natural Cures comes out. She has me on the show. And I sent to her 12, let me say it again, 12 bankers' boxes full of written comments, like these written comments that I, I showed you earlier. 12 boxes. I don't know if there was 100,000, 200,000. I don't know the number, but it was 12 boxes. That I know. Bankers' boxes stuff with handwritten comments. So think about it. These people didn't just type an email. They had to physically handwrite a comment, fold it up, put it in an envelope, get a stamp, lick the stamp, blah, address the envelope, and then go down to the mailbox and put it in. This is a pain in the neck. Most people ain't going to do that. I had 12 boxes of people that had written in saying how much they loved my books. And I sent it to Paula Zahn, and she wanted to do an interview with me on CNN. So she's got there, and, and they're filming it. It's not live. And she says, Kevin, uh, I, have a, I have a comment here from someone who says, uh, I bought the book, and it was too hard to read. It was too long, and I was unsatisfied. I didn't find it a good read, and I, and I sent it back for a refund. Kevin, how do you deal with with uh, people like that who don't like your book? I said, Paula, please look into the camera and tell your audience why you are so deceptive. Why are you trying to deceive and mislead them? Why are you trying to mislead your audience into thinking that nobody likes my book? If you were to give a balanced and fair interview, you would say, Kevin, 99% of the people that bought your book love it. You sent me 12 boxes of comments. I'm overwhelmed. I've never in my life as a journalist seen an author get that many comments, positive comments from their uh, people who read the book. Never seen it before. And I'm telling you, they've never seen it before. She goes, that should have been the interview. But instead, she gets one letter from someone who said they thought the book was too big. That's what the mainstream media, except ABC. ABC's great. They, they do everything perfect. They're, <laughs> they're over here smiling. No, these guys really are, by the way. They're a fair. These are honest journalists. They're doing a story. They're doing their job. They do. Listen, they want to get views. They want to get some controversy. They're a publicly traded company. They want to keep their jobs, get promotions. They know that if they produce a boring segment no one's going to watch it has to have some juice to it it's got to have some spice to it it's got to have some controversy they're just doing their jobs so don't give them a hard time applaud them they're doing a great job so the question is how how so all the negative publicity then i get held in contempt of court and i get the longest sentence in the history for the non-crime of contempt of court it's not, it's not a felony it's not even a misdemeanor it's lower than a traffic ticket, and I got 10 years in a federal penitentiary. Well, I'll tell you that story sometimes. Well, that's, that's another thing. I'll, if you read the prison diaries, you, 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 people get blown away. 
People want to make a make a movie on that prison diet. They go, I want to I want to do a story just about you going to prison and getting three assassination attempts while you're away. Yeah, that happens in the Bureau of Prisons. We know that all these high profile people all, all of a sudden commit suicide. And isn't it amazing that in every case the camera wasn't working that day and the guard fell asleep in every case? Really? Come on. Come on, mainstream media. Come on. The guy hangs himself, but the camera wasn't working that one day. In 10 years, there was one day the camera wasn't working, and it just happened to be the day that he committed suicide. And the guard just happened to be asleep during those three hours. Come on. Stop lying. All you have to do is say, look, this is clearly a cover-up. It's something that Russia would do or North Korea. It's clearly, clearly he was assassinated and killed. Tell the truth. Oh, this is what they don't want you to know about, by the way. Can you get a, get a glimpse here? So the, open up your eyes. And when you open up your eyes, now you can see media, news, what you read on the Internet, maybe with a little more skeptical eye and stop being a snyop someone who is susceptible to the negative influence of other people. Think about it. So someone says, Kevin, how did you overcome this adversity? The government took every penny that you had. Oh, and, and, and ABC took a picture of me driving in with a Mercedes. And it's a beautiful AMG Mercedes SLK. And they're going to probably put on the news, he's driving this luxury car. All right, so let me just clear it up, everybody here. It's a 2013 Mercedes, and you can go online, you can run the VIN number, it's worth 13 grand. So if I bought a brand new Kia, it, I'd have to spend more money than that. It's a 13-year-old vehicle worth $13,000. So it's, I'm not living in the lap of luxury. I spent 13 grand for a car, and I need to have a car, so give me a break. I want, I, I'd rather drive an old, nicer car than a brand new Kia. And I'm not saying anything against Kia, especially if you guys want to be a sponsor on my show. I like Kia. Matter of fact, you guys definitely should sponsor my show. You make great cars. Love them. All right. So, how, so, 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 so you think, Kevin, how do you come overcome this adversity? You come out of prison. You have nothing. You have some suitcases and some clothes. And somebody's saying, yeah, he looks pretty good. Got a nice shirt. Look at the nice tie. Look at the nice suit. Yeah, this is a Brioni suit. These are nice cufflinks. They are not solid gold. They cost... Less than 100 bucks. This shirt is a Stefano Ricci shirt. This is a silk pocket silk, and this is a, a Brioni tie. Guess how old the um, suit is? It's 30 years old. When you buy good quality material or good quality suits, they will last. Same thing with the tie. Same thing with the shirt. The shirt's probably 20 years old. The tie is at least 20 years old. The pocket silk, who knows? 30 years, 20 years, 25 years, 15 years. This is stuff I bought 15, 20, 25 years ago that the court said you are allowed to keep. Because when you come out of prison, you, you don't have any money. We took every penny. So I had some clothes, thank God, and thank God it fit me. Because you know when you're in prison, you either get skinny, most people don't, they get fat. So when I came out, luckily the clothes still fit me. The neck still fits. Not too bad. And it still buttons. Mm -hmm, pretty good. And the shoes, I got nice shoes on. Alden shoes, good quality. They'll last for 100 years. So I bought good stuff 20, 30 years ago. My, my, you guys saw me with a long overcoat. It's a cashmere overcoat made by Salka. They're no longer in business. They were on Oak Street in Chicago. And they used to make all the shirts and clothes for Al Capone, so they say. They, they, but it's all handmade from Italy, called Selka. Uh, uh, and I have a handmade, I, I had this beautiful Selka overcoat. I got that, I think, in 1991. Actually, I think it could have been even earlier. But somewhere around 1990, 1991, I bought that overcoat. And I wore it today. And I have a fedora, a gray fedora, which is uh, made downtown Chicago, which I also bought. Uh, a while ago. Good, good clothes last, thank God. So, Kevin, you, you got every penny taken away. You came out of prison. You didn't have a nickel to your name. You're, you're magically pulling things together because I am a marketing genius. 
and because you're a guru, and in the old days, you used to be the infomercial king. And of course, everybody knows me that I am a former insider. Okay, let's go back to guru. I'm doing, I'm going to, doing a guru talk. Here we go. Guru talk now. All right. So someone says, how do you overcome... How do you overcome <laughs> all this adversity? Well, I am going to write a book called How to Overcome Adversity. I think I know. I think I've dealt with enough. But there are a lot of people who've dealt with more adversity. Yes, I've dealt with my fair share. And for most people, when you see the lawsuits, losing every penny, having every nickel taken away from you, starting at 58 years old from scratch with a couple suitcases. They allowed me to keep a few suitcases when I came out. And some clothes. That's all I had. That was it. I didn't have a hair dryer. I didn't have a, tooth a toothbrush. I had to start all over again. How do you overcome adversity? How do you overcome when you feel that you've been wronged, where you've been falsely accused, where there's never been a finding of wrongdoing in any of the charges except for contempt? But always, no finding of wrongdoing. No finding of wrongdoing. No finding of wrongdoing, except for contempt of court, which is, really? So how do you overcome the adversity? Well, I'm going to suggest that if you're in America, if you're not, maybe, you could, maybe they have the app. Called the, it's called the History Channel. History Channel. And there's three particular series that you may want to consider watching. One is called Food That Built America. And this talks about the food that, we're, that is so common today, such as Entenmann's bakery goods, or Oreo cookies, or cereal, like grape nut cereal, or Post cereal, or Kellogg's cereal. You know, where did the name Post come from? Where did the name Kellogg come from? Kellogg's the guy's name. Post was the guy's last name. Just like Ford was the guy's last name. Pontiac was the guy's last name. Chrysler was the guy's last name. Walter Chrysler. Dodge was two brothers, the Dodge brothers. Most companies back then used last names as the company. With the, some exception, like National Biscuit Corporation, which shortened it to Nabisco, and again, these are American, and I know many people, probably more than half are watching, are not from America, but you might be familiar with the brands. But it, it's irrelevant where you live. If you watch Food That Built America, you're going to see, back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and even up into the 60s, uh, Dave Thomas, who started Wendy's, uh, uh, Colonel Sanders, Harlan Sanders, Colonel Sanders, who started Kentucky Fried Chicken, the McDonald's brothers, the guys who started uh, Burger King, you're going to see their story. These are called success stories. Back in the day, there was an author named Horatio Alger, and he used to write what's called Horatio Alger stories. The reason it was called that is because when Horatio Alger wrote a story, it was a rags to riches story talking about how he started with nothing and overcome all this adversity. And it was inspirational and motivational. You watch Food That Built America, you're going to see people who dealt with adversity far more than me in massive ways. And here's the point. Every successful person has dealt with massive amounts of adversity. Massive. They got lawsuits. Their plant burned to the ground where they have no insurance. They're out of money. They can't make anything. They can't, they have to raise money. They have nothing. Their plant burned to the ground. What do they do? The government passes a law effectively putting them out of business. All types of things that are beyond your comprehension. And you see in these in this documentary series, Food That Built America, how these men and women 
the woman who started Entenmann's, uh, the woman who started Mrs. Fields Cookies. You watch people who had a dream, who had a dream. They had a dream and everyone said, you can't do it. You're a woman. You don't have the education. You don't have the right connections. You weren't born in the right family. You didn't go to the right college. Henry Ford, what do you know about engines? You're not an engineer. You start listening and watching how these people who were, they went against all odds. They weren't supposed to succeed, but they had a dream. They had drive. They had passion for their dream. They, they had confidence in, their, in themselves and confidence in their dream. But here's what you see. You see that they had adversity in massive amounts, and not just once, but twice, but three times, and four times. And the difference, when you look at these successful people, they overcome adversity. Earl Nightingale, who I knew before he passed away, he was one of the co-founders of Nightingale Conant Corporation, which back in the day was the largest producer of audio cassettes for personal development in the world. They sold mega memory. I was their number one author right here in Niles, Illinois. Earl Nightingale put together an album called The Strangest Secret, which is you become what you think about most of the time. But Earl Nightingale said it best. He was one of the best researchers of data. He would said successful people are not people without problems. They're people who've learned how to overcome their problems. What about you? You got problems in your life? Stand up, face the problem, square, head on, and overcome it. There's a possibility stinker's creed. When faced with a mountain, I will not quit. I'll either find a way over, find a way around, bore a hole through, or I will stay here and simply turn the mountain into a gold mine. Possibility think is creed. But when you think about people, and the food one is great, food that built America. Then there's another one, toys that built America. Do you know the story of Barbie? Do you know the story of G.I. Joe? Iconic toys, the Super, Super Bowl. There's different toys. And you can see how these men and women got involved in business, had a dream, and the most important thing, I think, is how much adversity they faced. And this gives you an indication of how they faced adversity to overcome it. They didn't back down. When faced with adversity, they stood up. Many times they humbled themselves, but they didn't back down. They didn't roll over. They stood up and said, I'm still going forward. I still have confidence in what I'm doing. I, I, I know that what I'm doing is right and good. It's good and healthy for people. In my particular life, we were talking to the ABC guys here before the show. I go, look, I, I have confidence that the message that I have positively impacts people's lives. It's good for people. And if people say that I was only doing it for the money, oh, really, drug companies, do they sell drugs for the money or to help people? They do it only for the money. They're publicly traded companies. But there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. Well, guess what? You can't say, am I doing this for the money? Because I don't get any money. I am ordered to live on $3,750 a month. That's it. Every other dollar that comes in that comes to me goes to the consumer redress fund and goes to the government. I'm working for free. I am an indentured servant. I am doing this not because I have to, because my income is going to stay the same. I don't have to be here. I could be in the pool room, shooting pool. I could be in the cigar lounge. I could be in a movie theater. I could be in the gym working out. I could be going go at Top Golf, hit some golf balls. A friend of mine, he says, anytime you want to go, I'm paying. Yeah, I'm in. I could be at a nice restaurant right now having lunch. I got friends all around who says, you, anytime you want to go to lunch, Kevin, I know the financial bind you're in. You just call me. I will take you to lunch, and it's on me. You're getting screwed. You got screwed. I'm behind you. I'm with you. No problem. Think about that. I'm doing this show, I'm writing all these books, doing all this stuff, working harder than I've ever worked in my life, and I don't get any of the money.
It goes to the government. Someone said, well, why are you doing it then? If you can break it down, it's really two reasons. Number one, this is my mission. I'm here on planet Earth to do this. It's my mission. It's what I do. It's what I am supposed to do. I'm supposed to positively impact people's lives by sharing this message with people who are interested in listening, not to try to convince anybody. You know, and I'm not trying to make a pig sing. Guy told me that long, long ago. He says, don't, don't, don't preach to people who aren't interested. Don't try to convince people. He says, don't try to make a pig sing. You just waste your time and annoy the pig. So if you're watching, look, you, you have an interest. Uh, and if you're not, you don't have an interest, I love you. I, I don't judge you. I don't criticize you. We have different opinions. No problem. That's what life is about. The texture of different thoughts, opinions, ideas, motivations, dreams, goals, desires. That's okay. But clearly based on the millions over the years of comments that I've gotten from people around the world that have read my books, whether it was Mega Memory. Remember this one here? Do you remember this one? This was the first one, Mega Memory, 1989. I came out with the Mega Memory Home Study Course. Whether it was Mega Memory, Mega Speed Reading, Mega Math, whether it was Natural Cures, Deck Cures, Free Money, any of the programs, Your Wishes, Your Command, the Success Mastery Course, the Science of Personal Mastery Course, joining the Global Information Network, the monthly Zoom calls we do for partners at the Kevin Trudeau Fan Club, the Prison Diaries, the Nuggets of Gold. Oh, the newest book, The Nuggets of Gold. And this is on the website too, nuggetsofgold.com. They're all free on the website. You don't have to even buy the book. You can go to nuggetsofgold.com. They're all free. People say, the millions of people who said, this has positively impacted my life. How can I stop doing this? I have to do it for you. That's number one. Number two, if I'm really successful, I'm going to pay off the consumer, the FTC, the government, in the next two years. I'll come up with the, it's somewhere, it's somewhere between 7 million, it's between, somewhere between 5 million and 17 million. Nobody knows exactly. We're still working out the exact number. But whatever it is, I can pay it off if I'm successful in the next two years. That chapter then is behind me. Matter of fact, that book is closed. And then the profits are going to go right into the Global Information Network. I'm giving all that money away anyway. See, this is really going to piss off the government because they think I do it for the money. Look, Elon Musk does it for the money. Bill Gates does it for the money. Donald Trump did it for the money. All these people did it for fame and money. And there's nothing wrong with that. This is a free enterprise capitalistic system where we're supposed to applaud somebody who gets rich, not crucify them or demonize them. And in this country, oh, you, you read the newspaper. I'm going to give you something, a little, little, little homework. You read, nobody reads the newspaper. Okay, so don't read the newspaper. Uh, read articles online. Read articles online and see when they are attacking somebody that's get, that gets sued or the government filed the lawsuit against them. See how many times they say, and he used the money to live a lavish lifestyle. He purchased luxury items. They love that. That's like these are buzzwords. Lavish lifestyle. Luxury items. It's like it's a sin. It's a sin for you to live a lavish lifestyle. Work your ass off 80 hours a week, risk all your money, overcome adversity, make millions of dollars, and it's a sin that you actually live a lavish lifestyle. How dare you? That's what the media and the government, that's, that's communistic, ladies and gentlemen. That's not free enterprise. That's not capitalistic. That's not entrepreneurship. You're supposed to celebrate success. Celebrate, not demonize. But when I pay this off, I'm setting it up so I live not a lavish lifestyle. I'll live a decent life. Even the judge said, Mr. Trudeau, you should be able to live a decent life. I want you to keep enough money to live a decent life, not live poverty, but live a decent life. And I appreciated that so much because he said, look, we're not here to punish you. 
you need to live a decent life. Even if you file bankruptcy, you're allowed to live a decent life. But in my case, the Federal Trade Commission and the government wants me to suffer, suffer for doing nothing, selling a book that everyone loved. And remember, in my case, people paid 29 bucks and they got three books. They got the weight loss cure they don't want you to know about. They got natural cures, that hardcover edition and more natural cures revealed. They got $90 worth of hardcover, number one New York Times bestselling books for 29 bucks. If they wanted a refund, they could keep the books and I'd still send them a refund. Less than 5% asked for a refund. Are you kidding me? Anyway, so watch the History Channel. Food that built America, toys that built America, and then the men who built America. Sorry, ladies, back in the day, it was mostly men. So the name of the series is Men Who Built America. But we all know that there are plenty of women who also had major impacts in not just American success story and industry, but also around the world. But this one picks, picks on Andrew Carnegie, J.P. Morgan, the Vanderbilts, Henry Ford, you know, th those particular guys who were the titans of industry at the, at the time. Uh, uh, John D. Rockefeller. But if you watch those series, you will be inspired. You will be motivated. You will learn to have a dream. Focus on your dream. Never give up on your dream. Never get up on your dream. Never quit. Never quit. Never quit. Never quit. Never quit. If you get knocked down, get up. When you get knocked down again, get up. And you get knocked down again, get up. And you face adversity, you go, you plow through it, you face it head on, and you overcome that adversity. You learn from your mistakes. You take responsibility for what you did. You don't point the finger. And there's a lot of guys on TV right now that they're always pointing the finger, you know. It's a witch hunt. You know, this is politically motivated. And they're just pointing the finger without taking any responsibility for any of their own actions. Hey, look, maybe there is a little bit of witch hunt there. Maybe there is a little bit of, uh, you know, politi politicizing of the prosecution. I could certainly say that as well. Take responsibility for my actions. I learn from uh, my mistakes. I go back and say, look, let me, you know, every time you point your finger at somebody, there's three fingers pointed directly at you. So I could say, politically motivated. And I know mine was. It came from a, cer a certain political family to come after me. And, and, and that's, that's, fully documented from my side. I, I've seen that. I know that. So I could certainly say that. But then at the same time, I have to ask myself, but what did I do? What did I do that I maybe should have done different? And I take responsibility for those things and go, okay, I know. Maybe I, I you know, if I were to do it again, okay, I had to learn my lessons. I had to go through that adversity. No, reg no regrets. You move forward. You learn better person today than before. So I would watch those three things. I just want to give you a couple little tidbits here. We're getting close to our time allotment for the first show. It's got a lot to talk about. But there was a little uh, a clip that somebody sent me. It says, people who found success despite failures. Yeah. People who uh, got this sent to me. And this is beautiful. And it says here, J.K. Rowling Anybody know J.K. Rowling? Anybody here know J.K. Rowling? Thank God. Some of you. Brian's over here. Doesn't have no clue. All right. So J.K. Rowling is one of the most successful authors in the history of mankind. Am I using a little hyperbole there? She authored the Harry Potter books. I think it's probably not hyperbole. I think she is probably one of the most successful authors of all time. So J.K. Rowling authored all the Harry Potter books, which means she made zillions of dollars from the Harry Potter movies, too. J.K. Rowling was famously rejected by a mighty 12 publishers before Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone was accepted. 12 publishers turned her down, said it was a loser proposition. She never gave up. Legend has it Walt Disney was turned down 302 times before he got financing for creating Disneyland. Bonehead idea. Disney, you're, you're insane. Disneyland? No one's going to come to Disneyland. 302 rejections to try to get financing. But Disney had a dream. He had confidence in his dream. And he wasn't going to let anyone steal his dream. Albert Einstein didn't speak until he was four years old. 
Oh, he must be re retarded. Oh, can we say retarded? Or is that like politically incorrect? It's mentally challenged. He didn't speak until he was four years old. He didn't read until he was seven. So he was definitely retarded. I I'm sorry, mentally challenged. Yet he went on to win the Nobel Prize and became the face of modern physics. Think about it. Don't let anyone tell you you're dumb. You're not dumb. You may not have a high IQ. You may not have a lot of education. But you're a bright light. You're an extension and expression of God's love. Just as God is love, so are you. You are pure light and love. Look within. You got what it takes. And you're perfect just the way you are. Oh, here's a loser. Vincent Van Gogh only sold one painting in his lifetime to a friend. <laughs> what a loser. I want to be a painter. Anybody want to buy? No. His friend says, all right, all right, all right. I'll buy one of your paintings. Despite that, he kept painting. Despite the failure, he kept doing his passion and painting. And he finished over 800 pieces. His most expensive painting today is valued at $142 million. Think about it. Thomas Edison. And in today's world, people don't even know who Thomas Edison is. Oh, he invented the light bulb. He invented more, I think, inventions than anybody else in history. The phonograph, the telegraph. I mean, this guy invented everything. I mean, if you look at all the things we're using today, maybe not because of computers, but up until before the computer age, it's like Thomas Edison dominated. General Electric was originally called Edison General Electric. He started that company, electricity. Thomas Edison said this, and this is a quote, if I find 10,000 ways something won't work, I haven't failed. I am not discouraged because every wrong attempt discarded is another step forward. Think about this. You can overcome adversity. And that's really the magic. All right, so I got stuff here I didn't have a chance to talk about, but I do want to talk about this. Uh, a couple other things in our show. We are going to have a recommended book. And I'm going to do some movie reviews. I might even do some frozen pizza reviews or some food reviews, too. That way I can eat on, on the show. Yeah, I'm going to do something like that. But definitely we're going to have a book review every once in a while, as well as an old movie, like an old movie, like from the 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s, an old movie review that you don't have been seen, and a new movie review. And I'm going to give you the two, two of those real quick today. But here's the, my recommended book of, of the week, which is Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. If you have not read this book and you want to become successful in life, if you want a better, better marriage, if you want a better relationship with your children, if you want to have more friends, if you want to win friends and be able to influence people, then read the book. If you want to get a promotion in your job, read the book. If you want people to like you, read the book. So I'm going to help you. I'm going to read a couple things to you very quickly. So here's some of it. If you and I want to stir up resentment tomorrow that may rankle across the decades and endure until death, just let us indulge in a little stinging criticism, no matter how certain we are that it's justified. How many of you criticize people or things? How many of you watch uh, YouTube shows or podcasts and all they do is criticize everybody? I was watching one guy going, Evil, evil Google, evil Google, evil, evil Google. They're greedy. Google's bad. And I'm not going, you're on YouTube. They're owned by Google. If Google is such a horrible, disgusting company, then why are you on their platform? And if they didn't exist, you wouldn't have a platform, sir. It's called being a hypocrite. Stop criticizing. Kevin, you just criticized that guy. Go, oh, bad, 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 bad. You're right. Okay, 
When dealing with people, let us remember we are not dealing with creatures of logic. We are dealing with creatures of emotion, creatures bristling with prejudices, prejudices and motivated by pride and vanity. Ah, did you learn something? By the way, these are my little bookmarks. I am making a difference. I am an eagle. I never forget that to be genuinely interested in other people is a most important quality for all people to possess. Being genuinely interested in other people. There's a whole chapter on that. Six, the chapter is called Six Ways to Make People Like You. If you want others to like you, if you want to develop real friendships, if you want to help others at the same time as you help yourself, keep this principle in mind. Become genuinely interested in other people. Think about it. I am attracting wealth and abundance. I am attracting wealth and abundance. That's what I'm saying. The unvarnished truth is that almost all the people you meet feel themselves superior to you in some way. Pay attention. Students. My guru? Yeah. I'm giving you something of value here that can change your life. Let me start again. The unvarnished truth is that almost all the people you meet feel themselves superior to you in some way. And a sure way to their hearts is to let them realize in some subtle way that you recognize their importance and recognize it, it sincerely. If you haven't read this book, read it. If you read this book, read it again. Because to know and not to do is not to know. Think about it. All right. One more thing here before we wrap up. This Saturday, uh, we are delivering the money processes. These are the processes that I delivered last year. The response has been off the charts. These are the processes that I learned in the Brotherhood that re release the blocks that help you attract more money in your life. We're delivering those Saturday here in the Chicagoland area. And I'm having a private dinner with the people that are attending that money processes event on Saturday. So I'm taking out, uh, I think, 14 people to a beautiful meal. Uh, it's part of the deal. If you come to Chicago and purchase one of the money processes, I take you to dinner. So I'm going to have dinner on Saturday night with uh, 14 of our uh, guests, of our seminar attendees. I get a chance to meet them, we take a picture together, spend an evening together, socialize together, get to know each other. It's going to be fantastic. Hey, this is not going to last forever. It's going to be too many people. So if you're interested in people will say, how do I meet you? Well, there's, there's ways. This Saturday, I'm doing my live Zoom. And I think ABC is going to be there, too. I'm doing my live Zoom broadcast. Maybe. Depends on where I shoot it. But I'm doing my live Zoom broadcast. We do that for about an hour and a half to three hours for partners only in the fan club. If you are not a partner in the Kevin Trudeau fan club, become a partner. And we'll show you how you can uh, get to the partner level that allows you to send in your question. So if you are a partner, and a partner is just somebody who commits to $25 a month contribution to the fan club, the money doesn't go to me, it goes to the fan club. Fan club uses it for expenses that are all submitted to the court so they can see all the expenses and we're not doing anything funny. And then whatever's sent to me from the fan club goes right to the pay, pay, pay the government. So I don't get the money, but it's 25 bucks a month and you get a chance to join me for the live Zoom call and if you can't make it live, we record it, and it's in the partner area of the uh, fan club website. So you can go back. Once you sign up to become a partner, you get access to all of these. And this is where I answer all of your questions. I answer them. So people send in a question, and I give these amazing uh, I mean, people are flipping out. They're like, it's like I have a personal one-on-one -on -one session with Kevin where I can pick his brain because I'm a guru. And... I'm a former insider. And some people pick my brain because I am the infomercial guy. So that's, that's coming up on Saturday. Uh, so if, if you join today, you'll be able to join me on Saturday. And again, look at all the past ones as well. 
become a partner. And then Global Information Network, I will be appearing live at the Global Information Network Dream Weekend coming up in Orlando at the beautiful Rosen Shingle Creek Hotel in Orlando in April. If you're not a member of the Global Information Network, go to globalinformationnetwork.com, become a, a, a member, and then you can come and join me. Um, we, can, we even give you a free cruise, by the way. If you become a full member in the Global Information Network, I give you a free five-day cruise. <laughs> I mean, it's... It's crazy. Uh, we, we, we took over an entire cruise ship called the Norwegian Cruise Line Pearl. We did this twice before. So we just charted it. We signed a contract. We own the entire ship for the whole week. So there'll be 2,500 people on that ship. All of them will be Global Information Network members. And when you sign up as a member, become a full member, you get to go absolutely free, all expense paid, except your travel. You have to get to Miami on your own. But once you get on the ship, unless you want to get a massage or something. All the food is paid for. All the shows are paid for. Everything is paid for. Um, it's, all, it, it's just going to be amazing. All the seminars, I'm going to be there. I'll meet every single person. I'm doing all the training. It's, it's a $5,000 cruise minimum. With all the training, it's, it's easily a, 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 a seven to $10,000 cruise. And you get a ticket absolutely free. So if you're not a member of the Global Information Network, consider that as well. Um, this was our first show. I hope you like it. Please leave some comments in the chat. And we didn't get to any questions. Brian, did we, we didn't get to any questions. OK. Well, next time. Next time, we're going to take phone calls. So we'll take, take phone call questions. So I hope you like the show. Get on the Kevin Trudeau Fan Club Telegram channel as well. And go to the KevinTrudeauFanClub.com website. We'll put up some websites here and a bunch of other stuff. We're also going to show, do we have a list of, the, of, the, of some of the high-level uh, con contributors to the, we're going to scroll that as well. We have people that have made large contributions to the Kevin Trudeau Fan Club, which helped pay down this debt that I have with the government. Thank you. I appreciate you. We'll scroll those names as well. So go to KevinTrudeauFanClub.com. Check out all that stuff. You can check out all of our other websites uh, as well. This is Kevin Trudeau. Thanks for watching The Kevin Trudeau Show, everything they don't want you to know about. Next week, it gets cranked up even more, baby. We're back. Much love. I'm Paul. Thank you very much for joining us. Why do IRS agents, why do they have to have guns when they come to your office? I, I guess it's because they're afraid uh, people will be angry enough. about ways to cure and prevent disease without drugs and surgery, and that is a criminal offense in America. You know doctors right now that are in jail because they cured people without drugs and surgery. You can't handle the truth! Maybe you should just stick to that blockbuster lineup of Mr. Fix-It. I'm getting ready to the hang things your listeners care about are red versus blue, right versus left, and elephants versus donkeys. Barack Obama is president of the United States today because of stupid... Current affairs. You feel good about your president? Michael Savage. Let me tell you like it is, schmuck. Obama has jammed through a trillion-dollar spending bill. They couldn't 